Okay, honeybees, welcome back to part two. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you? Okay, so now I'm getting ready to tell you about the supplies, um, the things you would need for your water bathing, okay? Because that's what we're going to start with, water bathing, okay? All the canning for water bathing. So I'm going to tell you what supplies you would need for your water bathing, okay? And it'd be really simple, um, not really expensive. That's a good thing, unless you want to get fancy with it. I, you know, and they all do the same, excuse me, they all do the same thing, okay? So, I'm a budget-friendly person. If you can catch that sale, get it, you know what I'm saying? But it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work, okay? You wanna get the things that are gonna work, Okay, you don't want to shortcut yourself, so I'm going to give you the supplies on um, what you need to have when we get ready to do this water bath, water bath series, okay? I can't even talk right now because I'm so excited, but here we go. When I started my um, series for myself, as far as starting a can, I was like, where am I going to put all these lids and bands and all this other stuff? It's, you know, I'm getting a lot of it. I'm like Cuban Layton. And I was trying to figure out where I'm going to put all this stuff at. So I went to Dollar Tree. And I got me some uh, paper towel holders. Now, I know y'all have some paper towel holders that you're using. Some of them you might not be using. You got some that are like this. You got some that are hanging up on the wall where you can pull your paper towels like that from. Whatever paper towel holder you want to get, get some paper towel holders because they work gun wonderful. Or get whatever you want to get to hang up or put up your lids. You see what I got? That's what I used. I got this for my large ones. And I also got another paper towel holder for my small ones. See, I'm just dropping them down off in there and I still got some room for some more to drop down over here on this side, just like this. Just like that, okay? And I got a bunch of those. So I got a total of three, three of them, okay? And that way you can have them all separated. You have your large ones and then you'll have your small ones. You know what I'm saying? Lids. Okay, to put your lids on. Now, that's one thing, okay? So that way you have somewhere to put that stuff up so it'll be right here at your reach. So when it's time to put them bands on after you done washed them and everything, we'll get to that as far as washing them. Then you'll have your a little rack to put them on until that's time to do it again. Now you can get all fancy with it and put you a little uh, streamer or something like that, you know, a little banner with your little lids and stuff like that on there. You know, just if you want to be creative, you know what I'm saying? So that right there, I can pick it up, get ready to go out, go into the kitchen, and I got all my supplies in there. And I don't have to be sitting here fumbling, trying to count how many I need to have. I have them right here on this rack, okay? Paper towel holder, paper towel holder, okay? Okay, so now that you know about those bands, I'm going to tell you about the lids. The lids will look like this, okay? Now, as we're going through what I'm telling you what you need to get, okay? I told you about the go to harvest type jars and the bands and the lids that come on top of those jars. Now, over time, I used them and I was happy I was using them. But at the same time, I was upset because some of them do not adhere after you go through the canning process. Some of them just did not stay. It just did not stay. It didn't have a good seal to them, okay? So, what you'll need to do is find some that have the bands and the lids, okay? I decided that I was just going to start getting a box of the large and the small, the regular, you know what I'm saying, the regular size lids and bands and the large ones. You can get it in the ball and you can't go wrong. 
because they are going to stay sealed. Okay, they are going to stay sealed. So, as you get these, you're going to accumulate more lids and more fans. Okay, same as if you were getting those jars, the off brand from Balls. They're going to have the lids, they're going to have the bands. So, if you have jars that are, um, that are not, you know, being used, save those because those lids and bands can work on that. And then you can get you a, a, a um, one of those sealer ones, you know, if you want to seal your stuff with an automatic sealer, then you can use those, you know what I'm saying, for another project. So you won't throw those away. Keep those for, you know, from other for other storage, okay? But for canning, just go ahead and get you some ball or I'll put down below another site you can go on, okay, to get some more bands and some more jars, lids, I'm sorry, jars and lids. I'll give you another link to go to. And those are also um, great sealers, okay, when it comes to canning, okay? It'll be Ball, and there's another company. At this moment, I can't even think of it at the moment, but if I if it comes to me, I'll tell you what it is, okay? So, um, in this box, you will get 12 lids and 12 bands, okay? And um, the other company I was telling you about, you can get them separately as well, just like this, and you can get anywhere from 100 to 200 lids and bands for an affordable price. Because if we're going to be doing this canning and we're going to do that book, you're going to need a lot of them. You're going to need a lot of them. So I'm going to put it down below the link so that way you'll know what uh, to go for, you know, if you can't, if you can't find any more of the ball lids and bands okay I have the ball and the other one I remembered what it was it's called four jars f-o-r-j-a-r-s okay four jars dot com or you can go under ball canning dot com and you can find some more of the ball but the four jars they're very affordable Okay, because like I said, we're going to be going through this whole entire book. I'm going to go through this whole entire preservation book, okay, of canning. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to can up some stuff, y'all. So, four jars, you can get like three to four hundred bands and, and rings. You can get a whole lot of them, okay, for a good affordable price. I'm serious. All right. So, now you know. I remember it. Let's go to the next. The other thing that I was able to get and you're going to need as well when we go through this canning series, you're going to need a canning kit, okay? Again, you can get some from Walmart where you paint it individually or get the kit and that way it won't cost you as much as far as paying separately, okay? Find the kit. This I got from Amazon. I wasn't even looking at the name. It's an off-brand, okay, from a different company. But they have it in ball, if you want to stick with ball. But I got what I can afford, okay? I got what I can afford. It's a canning kit. In this canning kit, you would get you a vinyl jar lifter. Let me show you. And then this right here. You will be picking this up with the jars. You're going to be picking your jars up. Okay? You're going to be picking these jars up. And it's got this rubber thing right here. And it's going to go around your uh, jar. And I'm going to show you how this works. Okay? I'm going to show you. But this right here is called the jar lifter. Okay? The jar lifter. You're going to need a bubbler okay these ridges right here tells you the lip of the size of the lip on your jar it'll tell you the size of it so when you're using your jar and if it's saying one half inch one fourth of an inch or a third or whatever from that rim where it needs to be poured as far as your liquids when you're getting ready to can this is your measuring device from the lid the lip of the jar, okay? 
on the other end of the jar, this is the debubbler, okay? You're gonna go around inside that jar to keep the bubbles out, okay? That's the air bubbles, because you're gonna not need no air bubbles inside of your candy device. When you're sitting here doing your jars, you don't want no air bubbles in there when you're putting your food in there. You want to have a lot, all the air out of it. And this right here helps get that out of there, okay? Then you're going to need a jar wrench. The jar wrench is like if you're sitting those jars down, the jars are going to be hot when it comes out of that water. This right here is going to grip onto that jar. And that way you can hold it like that. So that way you won't be burning yourself with the other hand trying to hold that jar. This right here is going to grip that jar. Okay, this is the jar grip, okay? Then you have your little magnet right here. So when you're sitting here washing your stuff, now I'm gonna get to the washing part, okay? But if you have a lid, it's inside the pot, a little saucepan, and you don't sit there and you got them sitting in that hot water because it's sanitizing and stuff. When you get ready to put your lid on, right? little lid you're gonna go in that water and it's gonna get it magnified because it's gonna be hot you're not gonna sit here and put your hand in because you're sterilizing everything you're gonna put that in that water it's gonna pick it up you're gonna take it and put it right directly on that jar and it's gonna seal it and you're gonna take it off just like that by pressing down on it when you when you put it on your jar okay same with your lids when you get your lids, you're gonna tap your lids like that, trying to get it out of there. And you're gonna screw that band right there on. Okay? And then last and not the least, you're gonna have a funnel. And I can't. hold on. Your funnel. You're gonna need a funnel, okay? That's going to fit right directly on top of your jar, okay? So that way you can pour your condiments inside and there won't be no mess ups, you know, on the outside. But you set it directly on there and then you're going to fill it, okay? And you're going to need a ladler with a little spout or just a scooper that you would take your, um, your soup spoon, you know, when you dip your soup. That's what you're going to be needing to pour that stuff in okay your stuff all right so now i'm going to show you how each one works i'm going to get a jar so that way you can see what i'm talking about okay so those were all the things that came in the kit and we're going to go through that okay so we're going to use the jar lifter with the jar lifter okay you're going to get this top part you're going to go right here on top turn it around you're going to go this is going to be on the bottom. So now you're going to sit here and you're going to grip that. You see that? That's the jar lifter. That's going to pick up your jar. So you're going to have your mitten on this hand when you pull that bad boy out of the water. Or before you put it in, you're going to put it in the water and you're going to take it out this way. And you're going to have something underneath it to cuff it. So that way you won't have no water going all over the place and everything like that. So this is the jar lifter. It's sturdy. It's not going nowhere because you've got a tight grip on the top of it, okay? you got your tongs. The kitchen tongs is if you have some food that you need to kind of work around itself while you're putting those ingredients in there. And I'm going to show you how that works. Remember I said don't throw away your bands and lids? It can be used for something else. I put my homemade seasonings in some jars. And so I use those lids and stuff like that in there with that. But anyway, you put your lid off in there. So your jar, see, it's sitting right off in there. So if you're putting food in, say it's got some stuff hanging over, you want to pick that up and you don't want to use your hands and everything because everything is sanitized. Okay, so you want to just pick it up and you'll be able to work it. Whatever it is, you'll be able to work it and put it inside your jar. Okay, those are the tongs. Okay. 
Then you have your gripper. You're gonna come around like this on the outside and you're gonna be able to lift that jar up. It's gonna make it easy for you to lift it up. Everything, okay? That's the jar wrench, that's the jar wrench. That's also gonna help you open your jar as well. If your jar is too tight, that right there can open it as well. Here's your debubbler, okay? You'll be going inside your jar, whatever condiment you got in there, you're gonna go around there and take debubbling. You're gonna be debubbling, you're gonna see all that, you know, breaking all the air bubbles out of there. And then when you're doing that, it's bringing the fluid level down in your jar. You see what I'm saying? And then that way, all you have to do is fill that back up to wherever it's asking, to the lip line, which this comes into play. Those little ripples. You'll be able to see if you need a half an inch. Turn this camera around, just turn it. So you, you know, you got your measurements. Or you need to come down to here, it tells you how far you need to pour your liquids. So you can see. So you got, there's your one, you got two, see there? And three, see? Okay. And that's the measurements. So you'll know just about how much you need to put up to what line. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. So, here's a little run test so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. You're going to take it out of the water. You got your magnet. Say like you're getting it out of the water. Here it is. You're going to be going straight down like this on there. You're going to see that helps you. And it'll seal. It'll go right around there. It'll go all the way around that top. So if it goes like this, you do not want to pick it back up with your hands. You want to use it as much as you can like this. Then use your finger just to release it. Okay? Then you're going to take your fan, like this, your, the lid part, the lid. And you try not to touch the jar because it's going to be hot. So if you got a rag or you got your muffin on hand, or if you're just moving really quickly, you can probably hit it. But you want to screw it on there and you want it to get it where it will be like finger tip tight. You don't want to get it too tight. And we'll be talking about that as we're going into the canyon, okay? But you want to have it finger tip tight because it's going to tighten itself in the rest of the way when you put it in that water, okay? Then when it's done, you're going to hear it seal itself from the top. You're going to start hearing popping noises and all that stuff. But that's only in the future. So right now I'm just showing you how these things work. So you'll have an idea. Okay, so what are we talking about? Water bathing. Okay, so now you're going to need a water bather. Okay, this also I purchased from Walmart. It's not really expensive. Okay, um, it holds seven quarts okay and it holds about eight pints all right and i know y'all seen these before <laughs> that's what this is a water bather okay inside the water bather okay take the lid off it comes with a rack this is your rack it's gonna hold up your jars in this rack, okay? You're gonna be able to put this in here. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring the camera down so you can see, okay? Okay, you're gonna bring your rack in just like this. Now you see these ridges that are on the side? That's what's gonna help it hang at the top before you dip it down in this water. You're gonna take all your little jars and you're gonna set them all up in here. Pints, half pints, quarts, whatever it is that is asking for for that recipe for water bathing, okay? For water bathing. And put it in here, okay? 
and then after you get them all in there, you're going to lift it up and drop it down off in here and lay those right back to the side. Then all your jars will be in there. The water will be filled up over your jars. And then you'll be able to put your lid on, just like so. Just like that. Okay. That's your water bath. That is your water bather. Now, say for instance, you can't afford one. If you got you a stock pot, a stock pot that's about like that, the size of that, you know. Um, if you can get you a rack that can fit inside there, because you can buy those racks, racks separately. If you can find one, Marketplace, they have water bathers. If you want to get you one and just buy you one, you can buy you one. There's some on Marketplace as well, too. There's some that people are selling just the racks itself, individual, in case yours play out or something happens, there's a malfunction on it, you might need to get another one. Then you, you can get another one to go inside of your water bather. But if you don't have a water bather that's coming from Walmart, that you can't find on Marketplace. You can get you another stock pot, put your rack in there, and it will still do the job. Because that rack, you cannot put the jars directly on the bottom of that rack. I mean, on the bottom of that pot. If you put your jars on the directly on the bottom of that pot, it's gonna get too hot, it's gonna shatter, it's gonna crack, it's gonna do all that, and you don't want that to happen. That's why it comes with a rack, okay? Now, Say, for instance, you can't get you a rack. You can't afford a rack right away. Then another alternative is getting you a nice little towel and putting it down and pushing it down inside the water all the way down at the bottom and then put your jars on top of that, okay? So that way something is directly on the bottom of that pot and it's not your jars. Your jars will be sitting on that towel. So that way you won't have to worry about it busting and cracking as far as that way, too, as an, as an alternative, okay? The other things that you're gonna need as far as getting your water bath there, supplies and stuff, you're gonna need like some sure gel, okay? With this sure gel, this is like for no sugar added recipes, okay, for the water bath there. No sugar, low sugar, no sugar type recipes, okay? It's going to be in a pink box. And then you're going to have you some uh, ones that's calling for sugar. You're going to need that type of pectin. Okay, this is the original one. So you have the no sugar added or low sugar. And then you have the original that's for all the sugar that's, you know, is asking for. You're going to need that one. Okay, you can get it in liquid form. There's some recipes that we're going to be doing that's going to be liquid form as well, too. Okay? And it's going to be doing the same thing, only it's in liquid instead of powder. You can also subscribe on Amazon, you know what I'm saying, where you know you got something coming in. While we're doing the series, you know you're going to have something that's going to be coming in. And that way, you pay a subscription and then you'll have your, a, a bulk of them. Okay? And they won't be individuals where they be like, because it's only one in this in this one box. There's only one package in this box. But if you get you a bulk order, you'll have a whole lot of them. You'll have about 12, you know, in a bulk. So that way when you need to get one, you have some more lined up. You won't have to keep going and buying some. That's, that's cost effective. You see what I'm saying? By the time you get as many as you want to get, 12 of them, you done paid for a subscription if that makes any sense. So look at those numbers, all right? But here's the none sugar, low sugar pectin, and then you have your original that is calling for sugar. You got that one right here. This is the one you will need, okay? Here it is. Okay, you also wanna have measuring cups. Okay, you want to have you some measuring spoons, all the sizes. You want to have all of those at bay too. Because whatever it might be asking for, you're going to need this so that way you can see how much 
cups, you know, quarts, uh, how many spoons, half spoons, teaspoons, you know, tablespoons of whatever the recipe is calling. You will need to have all your little measurement gadgets with you at bay. Okay, when it comes to canning, you're going to need all of that. All of it. Okay, so if you're looking for some jars, Dollar Store have jars. You got your True Living and you got your Golden Harvest. Okay, True Living and Golden Harvest jars. If you cannot afford those ball jars, go to your Dollar Store or Dollar Tree, might have them as well, and get you some Golden Harvest jars. They come in pints, and they also come in quarts. Same with the True Living. Okay, I got a few True Living, and I got a few ball jars that I was able to get on sale. But those other two I was telling you about, they're very affordable. Very affordable. So let's get to it about that. Okay, so here is an affordable price. I do get these right here. Now these are the eight ounce jelly jars, okay, that you can get from Dollar Store. It might not be ball, but the jars are good, okay? The jars are good. Now, the lids and the bands, okay? The lids right here, I do not use, okay? I do not use them because they do not stick and stay stuck on there. You know, after the whole process and everything, they do not adhere on there. It don't stay on there tight enough, okay? Because it needs to be on there. It needs to be sealed on there when you finish your canning process, okay? You don't want it to be where it just came off because you're going to be checking that stuff. When you get it out of there, after it cools within 24 hours, that needs to be sealed on there, you know, and not be done came off. So the bands I do keep right here. I do keep those. That's why I have so many. I keep these. All right, because you can use these all day long because you're going to be taking these off. So you're going to need a lot of those, okay? You're going to need a lot of these, but these are what I use, you know, when I get ready to have some seasoning that I know made up and I got a jar and I want to put that in there. I can seal it with my little sealer or just screw it on there because I'm going to be using it all the time. And you can put those on other jars that you might have that you don't put up and you need something to seal it with you can use those like that but not when it's time for canning I'm not going I'm not using the uh, lids at all okay and so I got these from the dollar store and they have all sizes they have your pints they have your quarts you know what I'm saying they have those at the dollar store very affordable versus ball this ball is very expensive so if I was you, I'll get those. Unless you can catch you a sale on those balls and get them. Get those ball jars. So they come in all different sizes, like I said. And the ball right here, I got this on sale. It was on sale for five dollars. Five dollars. Yes, it, and that's why I grabbed them. You can catch them sales, grab it if you can. This is the wide mouth. Okay, this is what they would call the wide mouth jars and these also are for like your little uh, uh, jellies if you want to put your jelly and stuff like that little bitty little dishes like that but it's a wide mouth because it's got a wider mouth on top of it it's not narrow like the little one that showed you they don't have the small mouth like this that's the small mouth you want the wide mouth it look like that they're a little wider, okay? That's what these are, okay? And also, what I liked about the ball, because I tried to get these on sale. They have recipes on this box. And I like to cut them up and put them inside my little recipe box. So that way, if I want to can something else, whatever is on there, you, that's added to your collection of canning. That's another reason why I like getting the ball. Because they have a, a recipe. Whatever that book don't have. That ball recipe. If it's not in that home preserving book. You got another recipe that's sitting right there on that. 
And another thing, if I can't afford it, <laughs> yes, your girl, I turn that bad boy around and screenshot that so that way I can have that recipe. If I can't get it right just then, I'll screenshot it just so I can have that recipe up on my shelf. Okay? Mm-hmm. The other supply you're going to need, you're going to need a marker. Okay? I use a black marker. Okay? You can use whatever color as long as you can be able to see what you're writing. Yes, writing. Okay? Because on top of your jars. Okay? You have your lid. On your lid, you're going to write down your date and what it is that you're canning. Okay? That is important. You do not want to forget that at all. You want to remember what you have put in these jars. You're going to know what date. That's mostly important. You're going to need that date. Okay? So you can know when you canned that item. Okay? That way, if you're wanting to make some more of it, you'll be doing just like you do in a grocery store. You're looking and people are zoning up the old stuff and putting the new stuff that you have canned behind it. So that way you can be using everything. Everything is moving forward. So when you finish with the old, you're coming in with the new and you're just rotating it. But you've got to keep that date on there so that way you know when you did this. It's going to have a long shelf life as far as your food as well. So you all have within a year or two to use up the food that you have um, canned over time. And when you're making some more stuff to stockpile, stockpile your pantry, you have some more that's going right behind it. You're steady just taking it away and adding it up. Taking away, adding it up. Okay? So have you a pen on hand to write on top of that. Now if you want to get fancy, and you want to use a a little printer to print your little tags out and set it on top of there instead of writing on those lids you can do that too you can put you a little sticker on there if you want to do that okay you could do it all kind of ways as long as you write down what it is and the date okay you also want to have you some mittens that day you want to have you some nice towels or little mats, some nice mats to put on your counter. You're going to need all of that. You want to have that all for your supplies when it comes to canning. You want to have a lot of towels or a lot of mats because that's where all of your jars are going to go directly on the counter. And you don't want your jars directly on the counter. You want to have it where it's sitting on something that's not gonna um, make it, the, the cool and the hot hit, you know what I mean? So your counters will be cold, you know what I'm saying? It'll be like a cool temperature. And if you put that hot jar on that counter, it's liable to shatter, it's liable to crack, you know what I'm saying? And you do not want that to happen. All that precious time and all that work you put it into canning your stuff for it to happen. You do not want that to happen. So keep a mat or some little towels like this. You can get them from Dollar Tree. Okay? You can get them from Dollar Tree and just have a supply of those things. Okay? Have a supply of them. Have a supply of some mints. Because like I said, when you're holding that jar with that other thing, you want to have something to keep it from dripping to get to your counter. Hopefully, you'll be right there by your stove and everything will be right there at bay. And that way, when you turn, you're turning and you won't have to go doing all the extra walking. That's what I used to do. That's what I used to do. And I want to have everything at bay. So you want to have counter space free. You want to have all of that free when you get ready to take them jars up out of that pot and set it right directly on that towel. And you have something right here. So if you anything like me and forget that you just got it out of that water and you go to touching it. And then guess what? You done burnt yourself. You done dropped it. And all that. I have done it, y'all. I have done it. So that's why I'm letting you know. Have you a good mitten? 
And babe, so when you get ready to take these jars and put them over here from your little equipment, you won't be grabbing that and be like, oh, you got your mitten. So you won't burn your hand, okay? I've done it. Mm-hmm. And it only took one time. One time. That heat was nothing nice. Nothing nice. Okay? Now that you got everything that you need as far as your canning equipment, okay? That's everything you're going to need for your canning equipment, okay? So when I get ready to say, okay, we're going to work on, we're going to do this or we're going to do that, then I'm going to be able to read you out the recipe. So if I'm doing a video for gardening or something like that, and I'll be like, hey, y'all, this coming Thursday, we're going to be working on this canning project, which is, it could be grape jelly. Okay, start giving y'all's equipment. I'm going to give you that recipe for that grape jelly, right? And then I'm going to put it in the description box. Okay, I'm going to put it in there. And that way, you will know everything that you need to have, okay, for that recipe. So you won't be sitting there like, what all do I need to get? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make sure I let you know way ahead of time way ahead of time for that date they'll give you a whole week to look for it okay if you are wanting to go with the video that way you know hey you don't make plans hey honey i i'm gonna be canning on this day girlfriend i'm gonna be canning on this day okay we're gonna have to schedule around that if you want to learn how to can i'm not telling you what to do i'm just saying when I set this day up, I'm not making no plans for nothing. This is for me and for you, because I want you to learn, okay? I want you to learn to start canning, okay? So when I say canning series, I'm gonna have everything that you need to have, but I got, you're gonna have it too. And we're gonna do this together. We're gonna do it together, okay? I'm going to have my email at the bottom. If you want to send me an email, a picture, or something. If, and let me know, hey, I did it. Or you can leave it in the description box. Hey, love it. I did that. And I'm so happy I did it. You know what I'm saying? All of that. All of that. Okay? And so we're going to be doing it together. You're not going to be by yourself. Okay? So thank you for coming to l and Honeycomb Homestead. This is the supplies that you're going to need for water bathing, okay? And I'm ready. Are you? Y'all, have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.